ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम अज्ञानतिरांधस्य ज्ञानांजनशलाकय चक्षुन्मील येन तस्म श्रीगुरव नम श्रीचैतन्यमनोभीष्ट स्थात येन भूतले स्वयं रूपकदाम ददा स्वदाक नम ओं विष्णुपदा कृष्ण पृष्ठा भूतले श्रीमते भक्ति वेदातस्वामी नमिने नमस्ते सरस्वते देव गौरवाणी प्रचारिणे निर्विशेष शून्यवादी पाश्चातरिणे जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभो निनंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधर श्रीवासादि गौर्भक्तवृंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे This is the most auspicious month of Purushottam Adhik Mas, and the Vaishnav culture is that we sing the Chaurashtakam in this month. So, in today's session, we will try to discuss the eight verses of Chaurashtakam. <laughs> we will try to see what the meaning of these verses are. So, the verses will come on the screen, and then we will chant them very quickly, and then we will discuss. Does that sound like a good plan? Yes. Even if it is not, please say a Haribo. <laughs> it really inspires us. <laughs> so this is composed by Shila Bilva Mangala Thakur, who was a very, very wonderful, exalted Acharya, devotee of Krishna, who composed the very famous Sri Krishna Karana Amrit, which is Amrit to the Karana, to the ears of Krishna. And he has also composed the 72 verses long. I think 71 verses long, Govinda Damo Dara Stotram. And apart from that, the Chaurashtakam is also attributed to Srila Bilva Mangala Thakur, who was from South India, also called as Bilva Mangalam, right? But he lived in Brindavan for a very long time at Brahma Kund, and being netrahin without vision of the eyes, um, still he gave vision to the whole world. He wrote so many wonderful songs. Which are full of water. Sorry, full of rasa, <laughs> because Krishna says, "I am the taste in water. I am rasa." <laughs> so, let us quickly begin. Of course, each of these verses can be elaborated for a long, long time. There are so many directions of purports that can be given, but in the interest of time, we will hop, skip, and jump from verse to verse. With your permission, I'm going to be a very uh, restless monkey tonight, jumping from one branch to another. Which means one line to another, and also from one tree to another, which means one verse to another. Again, these are my plans. It's possible at the end of the class I may have finished only two verses. Possible, because jare jai che na chaye te tai che kare nritya ekale Ishwar Krishna are sabavritya. Krishna is the king, and we are the servant. And the way he makes us dance, like a puppeteer makes a puppet dance, we will dance. So let's begin. ब्रजे प्रसिद्ध नवनीत चोर गोपांगना चुकूलचोर अनेक जन्मार्जित पापचोर चौराग्रगण्यम पुरुषम नमामि सच अ ब्यूटिफुल वर्ड्स लेट्स रीड द ट्रांसलेशन आई ऑफर माय रिस्पेक्टफुल ओबेसेंसेस टू दैट फॉरमोस्ट ऑफ थीव्स 
So as we are reading the English, we will also try to um, track it back to the Sanskrit. So I offer my respectful obeisances. What word is that? In the whole verse? Namami. That is correct. I offer my respectful obeisances is Namami. To that foremost of thieves. Chaura Agraganya Purusham Namami. So in Sanskrit, the word Agraganya means first. Hmm? So the one who comes first in the group is Agraganya. And Purusham means the Supreme Lord. So I bow down to that Supreme Lord Purusha who is Chaura Agraganya, who is best among chores, thief. Huh? Okay. Who is famous in Vraja? What is the Sanskrit for that? Vraja Prasiddham. Jo Vraj mein Prasidh ho wo, Krishna. Hmm? As the butter thief. Navanita Chauram. Navanita means butter and Chauram means the act of stealing. Gopanga Nanam Cha Dukula Chauram. He who steals the gopis' clothes. We will discuss that also. One of the most uh, misunderstood pastimes of Krishna. Hmm? So Gopa Anganam, which means the gopis. Cha Dukula Chauram. Dukula means cloth. And then, who for those who take shelter of him steals the sins that they have accumulated over many lifetimes? What is that one line left? Aneka Janma Arjita Papa Chauram. How wonderful. Aneka means unlimitedly. Aneka Janma. Janma means births and lifetimes. Arjita Arjit Karna to accumulate. Papa Sins and Chauram means to steal. So he who is ready to steal the sins that we have accumulated over many lifetimes to that best among thieves, I bow down. Is this clear? Shalom, let's discuss a little bit. And then we'll go to the next verse. Vraje Prasiddham Navanita Chauram. Why is Brindavan called Vraja? In Sanskrit, the word Vraja means to move. Vrajanti. Hmm? In Sanskrit grammar, in Sri Harinamamrita Vyakaranam, Srila Jiva Goswami Pad gives this dhatu, this root, vraja. It's a verbal root meaning to walk, to move. Hmm? So why is this land called vraja? Because everyone's walking constantly. There were no cars coming from Noida and Gurgaon and Ghaziabad and Delhi and Agra. People were walking. Mathura to Brindavan was a walk. Brindavan to Govardhan was a walk, and in Brindavan the Parikrama was a walk, Govardhan Parikrama is a walk, Radhakun Parikrama is a walk, Barsana Parikrama is a walk. So everyone, sadhus are constantly walking from one kund to another, from one pond to another, from one temple to another, from one pastime place to another. Therefore the whole land is called the land of walking, Vraja, Vraja Dhamma. But it has a very deep meaning. This is called Vraja, the land of walking or moving. Why? Because in this land, it's not just externally walking. People are moving moment to moment according to Krishna's desires. If there is forest fire and the friends say, Krishna, please save us. And Krishna says, close your eyes. Now think about it. There's a forest fire and we are stuck between a forest fire and we call out to Krishna and Krishna says, just shut your eyes, close your eyes. What would we do? Immediately, our lack of surrender would ask this question. I, I'm ready to even go to sleep, but how is that going to solve the problem? But the friends of Krishna are so kind, are so sweet, that if Krishna says, close your eyes amidst a forest fire, they're ready to close their eyes. Which means moment to moment, they're ready to walk. Sometimes left, sometimes right. Sometimes left, sometimes right, according to Krishna's desire. If Krishna says, open your eyes, they're ready to open their eyes. If Krishna says, close your eyes, they're ready to close their eyes. If Krishna says, let's steal butter today, they're ready to steal butter today. If Krishna plays the flute and calls the gopis, the gopis are ready to leave everything and run to Krishna. If Krishna says, today is the day to play the instruments, we are ready to play the instruments. <laughs> but during Kirtan, <laughs> not during Katha. <laughs> So this is the land of Vraja, where moment to moment, everyone is moving according to Krishna's? <laughs> according to Krishna's? Desires. 
So what are the two reasons why this land is called Vraja? Who will tell? What's the external and what is internal? Yes, Vibha. Okay. How wonderful. Little, we've heard of little Krishna, but this is little Vibha. In our classroom here, who says the two reasons why the land of Vrindavan is called Vrajadham, it's because externally everyone is walking from place to place and internally they are walking and moving according to Krishna's ever-changing plans and desires. If Krishna says, today we'll go to the forest and have breakfast, everyone is ready. If Krishna says today, today is the day when we will lift the hill. Vraje, in this beautiful land, Prasiddham, there is one person who is very famous. Who is that? Krishna. And Srila Bilva Mangala Thakur says, Navanita Chauram, the butter thief. Now, oftentimes, it's a question to ask, why is Krishna, who is God, stealing butter? And many times people use this as a frisbee to counter-question the devotees of Krishna. You're worshipping someone on the altar who was a thief? We say, no, he was not a thief. He was the best among thieves. <laughs> In fact, we sing a Chaurashtakam glorifying his stealing pastimes. So why does he steal butter? Is it that Krishna doesn't have butter? Is it that Krishna doesn't have milk? Is it that Krishna doesn't have yogurt and sweet? It's described Krishna has 999,000 cows. Much more than that actually. But this is the number given. 999,000. <laughs> Everyone likes at least six figures. <laughs> Seven figures even better. Yes? Six figures at least. So Krishna goes... 999,999, one shot <laughs> of a million. That's how many cows Krishna has in Vrindavan. And many of them have calves. And that's just Krishna's cows. Think about the cows his friends have. And think of the milk that they have. And think of how much butter and yogurt and paneer and sweets can be made. What is the need to steal? But the need is... There's one Krishna in the house of Mother Yashoda and every motherly gopi wants Krishna in their house. If Krishna likes butter, that's what they want to churn. And all the motherly gopis, they are praying to Vishnu. The proof that our butter is tasty, the proof of that should be, not compliments, but Yashoda's son Sri Krishna should break into my house and jump into this pot of butter and yogurt and start eating it with both his hands. All the motherly gopis are praying to Narayan, please prove to us that our butter is tasty and you've accepted our butter and the reciprocation is not a flower falling from the altar. Sometimes, you know, you go to some homes and if the flower falls from the altar or something inconceivable happens, you'll say, oh, did you see Krishna's reciprocating? In one home, we had kept for offering and the light in the altar flickered like this. And we were like, wow, Krishna accepted our offering. You see, the light is always off, but it flickered. Then we went to the host and the host said, actually, the lights are not working. <laughs> they regularly flicker like that. In the <laughs> so we have our ideas on how Krishna reciprocates. But the motherly gopis, they would pray to Narayan that the way we want your reciprocation is let the son of Yashoda jump and break into our house and jump into the pots of butter that we have made. And with that, we will understand that we have made bet good, better butter. <laughs> not bitter butter, but better butter. <laughs> and this is not Betty, by the way. <laughs> this is Bal Gopal. And Krishna would break in. Our Acharyas explain. Krishna would make plans in Brahma Muhurta with his friends on how to break in and steal butter from the house of the neighbors. And the motherly gopis, 
they would try to hide the butter. And Krishna had inconceivable ways of finding it. And sometimes they would even try to stack up the pots of butter up at a height so that Krishna, baby Gopal, who's only so much, doesn't reach it. But what would Krishna do? He would make pyramids out of pyramids. What they do, do in Daihandi, you've seen? The breaking of the pot during Gokulashtami, where does that come from? It comes from Gokulodsavamishanam, Govindam Gopika Priyam, Krishna. So Krishna with his friends would make a pyramid and they would stack themselves up. They would climb on the shoulders and on the shoulders and on the shoulders and then on the top is Krishna holding the rope and <laughs> breaking the pot and everyone's bathing in the butter. It's a mountain, a beautiful volcanic mountain of butter. But then the motherly gopis would say, okay, if you stack it up, he still finds it. Let's hide it. And what we should do, we should switch off all the lamps so that he can see it. Because if the lamps are in there, he has no light to enter. But then what does Krishna do? He wears all these expensive jewelries that Mother Yashoda puts in, which are sparkling and radiant and effulgent, and they lit up like Koti Surya Samaprabha. Millions and millions of suns get their effulgence from the tip of the toenail of one of the nails of Krishna's lotus feet. Then what to speak of the effulgence in his ornaments? Krishna wears all of them. He has very beautiful bracelets and anklets and armlets and waist belts and necklaces and earrings. And as he's moving, it's illuminating. He's the source of Parabrahman. He's the source of the Brahma Jyoti. And as Krishna enters, the whole room lits up. Now the gopis don't know what to do. <laughs> They would lovingly ask their husbands if they could guard the house. And the husband would stand outside, waiting for Krishna. If Krishna's going to come, I'm going to stop. And then Krishna comes in very cutely. He comes there. Hi, uncle. <laughs> and the uncle by then, the husband of the gold piece, his heart is melted like butter. And as he's standing and looking at Krishna, Krishna's already slipped in between his legs. And he's gone inside with his friends and the uncle is still standing there thinking that this is all just a dream. And then Krishna goes inside, breaks all the butter pots, eats all the butter, feeds all his friends. And when there's still more butter, then Krishna calls the monkeys. And then the monkeys come in through the window. And then the monkeys come through the window. And Krishna with both his hands, <coughs> he's taking butter and feeding the monkeys. With both his hands, he's feeding the monkeys. And the monkeys are eating and rubbing their tummy. It's so good. That's actually finger licking good. Not the things that people talk about in this world. It's the butter of Mother Yashoda. And then it is described Krishna is feeding the monkeys with both his hands. And the monkeys are feeding and Krishna is feeding and the monkeys are feeding Krishna. And Krishna is feeding the monkeys and the monkeys are giving Krishna. And then there's still more butter. Krishna is rubbing it on the face of the monkeys. And then there comes a point where the monkeys say that's enough. That's enough. Enough for the day. And at that point, Krishna takes the pot and throws it down with all the butter splashing. And Krishna loudly proclaims, this butter is so useless, even the monkeys don't want it. <laughs> In some places, Krishna finds it very difficult to find the butter pot. They are hiding. The gopis are hiding the butter pots and the lights are switched off. And sometimes the pots are... Collected by Krishna, but it's all fake pots in the sense there is no butter inside. So then Krishna gets very angry. He gets into the bedroom and finds the little babies, the sleeping babies in the cradle of the parents. And Krishna goes to the babies and pinches them. <laughs> Krishna pinches the babies. 
and the babies would cry. And then when they would cry, Krishna would say, for the mistakes that the parents commit, the kids suffer. Next time, tell your mother to keep some butter for me. And in some places, Krishna would go in and there are no babies because not all the gopis are children. Some are newly married as well. So there are no babies. What does Krishna do? He gets helpless. He's gone inside. There are no pots. And if there are pots, there is no butter. And he finds it difficult to climb because it's up there. And sometimes it's not up there because he, they have kept it hidden. And the lights are switched off. And the husbands are guarding. And the gopis are out. And there are no babies. Whom to punish now? Krishna goes on the altar of these gopis, sits on the place of Vishnu, which is himself, and passes urine. I don't need to repeat that. <laughs> Baby Gopal jumps onto the altar, the sitting place of Vishnu, that's him, and he passes urine. Kids, please don't try this at home. And then at the end, parents will say, they will ask the kids, what did you learn in this person's class? Time will tell. <laughs> Krishna passed urine once, 5,500 years ago. And we're still talking about it. This is God. We attend nature calls so many times. The question is, who cares? Even we don't care. Why does Krishna steal butter? It is only to reciprocate with the love of the motherly gopis who make those butter pots full of love. Our acharyas explain, the butter represents the heart. What does the butter represent? The heart. When the butter like heart, which means the heart becomes white as butter in purity, and soft as butter in compassion for others. That's when the butter thief comes into the pot of your life and steals the butter of your heart. This is what the butter thief represents. Do we all want to lose the butter like hearts to the butter thief, Sri Krishna? No? <laughs> yes. For that we have to make sure that our heart becomes white in purity. And that will happen by performing bhakti, by chanting Krishna's names. Wherever Krishna is called, Krishna goes. You can see in the Ramayan. Sri Ramachandra went to Panchavati. Sri Ramachandra went to Dandakaranya. Sri Ramachandra came to Ayodhya. Sri Ramachandra went to Kishkinda. All of these places he was invited. By somebody or the other. Vashishtha Muni, Agastya Muni. In Ayodhya, the Putrakameshti Yadni of Dasharat Maharaj. Everywhere Sri Ram was invited and he came. But there's only one place where he went without invitation. What was that place? Lanka. Everywhere Sri Ramachandra went without invitation. Correct? No, with invitation. But only in Lanka he went without invitation. So we should pray to Sri Krishna in the form of Sri Ram. My heart is like Lanka, where the ten-headed Ravana in the form of lust and anger and greed and pride and envy and jealousy is living with his ten heads. And I know in the pages of Ramayana, you went to Lanka without invitation. Now I am wholeheartedly inviting you with the chanting of the holy names to the Lanka of my heart to destroy the Ravana of my anarthas. O Sri Ram, in the form of Sri Krishna, please enter this place and steal the butter of my heart. Shri Krishna Chandra Bhagavan Ki. So this is Braje Prasiddham Navanita Chauram. Now Gopanga Nanam Cha Dukula Chauram. This is the, perhaps the most misunderstood pastime of Krishna, where Krishna is stealing the clothes of the gopis. Shukadev Goswami time and again uses a word for the gopis in this pastime, and that is Kumari Kaha which means they were less than five years old. The whole story flips if you depict it in a wrong way. 
If this pastime was lusty, do you think Vyasadev and Shukadev Goswami and Narada Muni and Parashara Muni, who are great saints, who are completely celibate, are going to vibrate their tongue with these pastimes? Are we more intelligent than they are? Would Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu accept Srimad Bhagavatam if it has pastimes like this, if it was lusty? Would Sripad Ballabha Acharya, Sripad Adi Shankara Acharya, Sripad Nimbarka Acharya, Sripad Ramanuja Acharya, Sripad Madhva Acharya, Sripad Sridhar Swami, Sripad Vishnu Swami, would all these great saints comment on pastimes like this if it was a lusty affair? Absolutely no. So we must understand, these children, the gopis were less than five years old. And even till this very day, you can see in Brindavan, the kids who play on the street, many times they are not properly dressed at that age. At the age of two and three and four. Even now you can see they are running around playing. Sometimes they have a stick in their hand and a tire and they are hitting the tire and running from one village to another. Even in the present generation. So the gopis were not 25 year old as depicted in many pastimes. Please understand this. Bhagavatam says Kumarika. Hemante Prathame Masi. In the first month after the month of Kartik, which means in the month of December, these young girls who, was only, who were only three or four years old, they did one month of tapasya. And what was the tapasya? They were eating saltless khichdi for one month at that age and bathing in ice cold water of the Jamuna early in the morning. That's intense. And what was the desire? They, these girls were all daughters of small landlords in Vrindavan. There were many landlords and these girls were daughters of small landlords. And all of them desired that when we grow up, we want to marry Krishna. And just like you see in the present generation to get into the IITs, the preparation starts from sixth grade. IIT is given at the 12th grade, after which four years of undergrad into IIT Bombay or IIT Kanpur or Kharagpur. During my time, it used to be the preparation would start after 10th grade. But then I saw during Arjun Sakha's time and later, children started preparing from 5th grade and 6th grade. So I thought to myself, if you have a very big goal, preparation must start early in life. And my mind went to this pastime. The young gopis of Brindavan, who are only about four or five years old, they started preparing for the marriage to Krishna. And for that they said, in the coldest month of the year, we will bathe in ice cold water of Jamuna neck deep, and we will chant, Katyayani Mahamaye Mahayoginya Dhishwari Nanda Gopa Sutam Devi Patimme Kurute Namaha. The gopis of Vrindavan, the young girls, they prayed to Mother Parvati. Bhavani. Because Mother Parvati has a very wonderful husband. What is his name? Mahadev. Swayam Mahesha Shvashuro Nagesha Sakha Dhanesha Stanayo Ganesha Tathapi Bhikha Thaname Vashambhu Bali Asi Kevalam Ishwarecha. Who can have a husband like Lord Shiva? You will say, well, what is so special about Lord Shiva? This verse says what is so special about Lord Shiva. He is unparalleled. There is no equal. Nacha bhuto na bhavishyati. Eka Shiva dvitiya nasti nacha bhuto na bhavishyati. Shiva equals only himself. Swayam Mahesha. Who is he? He is the Lord of everyone. Mahesha. And Shwashuro Nagesha. His father-in-law is the Lord of the mountains. Parvat. From where Parvati appears. And Sakha, his best friend. Dhanesha, Kuber. That's a good friend to have. The richest person is your best friend. Swayam Mahesha, the most powerful controller is Lord Shiva. And Shwashuro Nagesha, his father-in-law is the king of mountains. Sakha Dhanesha, his best friend is the richest Elon Musk of all times. And Tanayo Ganesha, and his son is Lord Ganesha. Think about it. The most intelligent who broke his task to write the Vedas, who with his big ears can listen to Harikatha and hides his mouth with the trunk, which means I won't speak, but I'll hear. Lord Ganesha is amazing. A gajanana padmarkam, gajanana maharnisham, anekadanta bhaktanami.
Amazing personality, Lord Ganesha. Most intelligent, most empowered. And Gananam Ishaha Iti Ganesha. Ganesha means he who is the commander in chief in, in the fight. Generally, we don't think of Lord Ganesha as a warrior, right? But he is a powerful fighter. Gana Isha. Gana means groups, army. And he is the commander in chief, Isha. Therefore, he is called Ganesha. Swayam Mahesha Swashuro Nagesha Sakha Dhanesha Tanayo Ganesha. Who can have a combination like that? Tathapi. Still look at the Vairagya of Lord Shiva. The renunciation. Tathapi bhikṣa thaname vashambhu bali asi kevalam ishwarecha. Still Lord Shiva sits under a kalpavriksha tree in Kailas chanting Ram 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 this 30 seconds will save us from billions of lifetimes of sin. Ram Nam is so powerful. Ulat Nam Rat Sab Jag Jana Adi Kavi Bhai Brahma Samana. Goswami Tulsidas Ji has written, Ratnakar said Mara, not Rama, Ulat Nam, Ulta Nam, Sab Jag Jana. The whole world saw. That someone like Ratnakar chanted not Rama, but Mara. Mara means death. And what happened? Adi Kavi Bhai Brahma Samana. And he became the great Valmiki. If the name is chanted backwards and this is what the name gives, imagine if the name is chanted properly, with the proper pronunciation, with the proper mood to call out to the Lord. Na jane tasya kim phalam. Then I don't know what we will get. This is Lord Shiva. So Mother Parvati has such a wonderful husband. So the gopis in Vrindavan, the young girls, they dip themselves in ice cold water. They dip themselves in ice cold water. And without salt, they ate khichdi for one month, chanting Katyayani Mahamaye Mahayogini Dishwari. Just like you have Lord Shiva, we beg, please give us the son of Nanda, Sri Krishna, as our husband. Teaching all of us, we can't get Krishna unless we are ready to do tapasya. Sugarcane rod, unless it goes through the blades, no sweet juice will come out. Sandalwood, unless it is vigorously rubbed, no fragrance will come. Fruits, unless it's squeezed, no sweet juice comes out. Similarly, we all have to do parishrama. Drishtva Parishramam Krishna Kripaya Asitsva Bandhane Mother Yashoda did Parishrama hard work and only then she could bind Krishna. Rukmini cried and wrote a letter only then she could get Krishna. We cannot watch Netflix and sit on our couch and think one life back home back to God. It nahi hoga. We have to put a lot of hard work. Now these little gopis they had surrendered everything to Krishna everything. They surrendered the prestige. People were looking at them performing this vrat. Some were making fun of them. They were coming out of their houses early in the morning to perform vrat. But they had some attachment to their cloth. <laughs> they had some attachment to their cloth. Some of those clothes were the birthday clothes. Some of those clothes were gifts by elders. Some of those clothes were their favorite color. So that was still the last Trace of material attachment, if you could call it. And Krishna is teaching us. Krishna brooks no competition. You can say, Krishna, please accept me. And with one hand, we are holding on to our furniture. Krishna says, come, I am ready to take you. Itni bhi kya jaldi hai. Aaj kare so kal kar. Kal kare so, parso, itni bhi kya, jaldi hai, jina jo hai, barso. Why today Krishna, I will just finish my education. Okay, how many years? Four years. Okay, after four years I'll come. Will you come to Vaikuntha with me? Of course, let me just graduate then I'll come. Krishna comes after graduation. Yay, you're coming to Vaikuntha. I just got placed in Apple. <laughs> Facebook. Microsoft, I'm moving to Seattle. <laughs> Krishna says, wonderful. 
After a few years, Krishna is saying, are you now ready to come? Uh, I would love to come, but you know I'm getting married soon. So after marriage, pakka. Krishna says, really? After two more years, are you ready to come? I'm expecting a child. After ten more years, now will you come? Bacha chota hai, main unko kaise chhod ke aao? Ek baar wo bada ho jaye, settle ho jaye, uski shaadi ho jaye, may my child get married, then I am free, then I will come. Krishna comes. Oh, your child got married. Now are you ready to come? Ek baar pote ka shri mukh to dekh lo. Let me look at the face of my grandchild, then after that I am coming to Vaikuntha. Krishna says, anyway, by then time is up, you have to come to Vaikuntha. <laughs> Any little trace of attachment apart from Krishna, Krishna likes it, take it away. So that there is complete 100% attention. In Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's Leela, we can see, Srila Sanatan Goswami, he came to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He said, I am surrendering to you. But she, Srila Sanatan Goswami had a very expensive, very beautiful, wonderful woolen quilt blanket. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu didn't say anything. He was just looking at the blanket. <laughs> you're saying, I, um, Amito Tomar, Tumito Amar, I am yours and you're mine. But still there's some attachment to that blanket. Mahaprabhu didn't say anything. He just looked at Sanatan Goswami's shoulders. Samajdar ko ishara kafi. Sanatan Goswami, very wonderful scholar and Vaishnav. He went on the banks of the Ganga and there was a simple, humble, poverty-stricken old man. Srila Sanatan Goswami said, can you give me your blanket? Can you trade it with mine? You can take mine and give me yours. So that man said, are you making fun of me? My blanket is full of holes and your blanket is so expensive. Sanatan Goswami said, that's why I want to exchange it. Please give it to me. The man happily agreed. He gave his and Sanatan Goswami gave his expensive quilt blanket. And now with that old Swami wrapped it and came to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Mahaprabhu said, I am so happy to see this blanket. He said, this was the last trace of material attachment. Sanatan Goswami, now you are liberated. Haribo! Krishna's teaching that through the gopis. Also the cloth represents falsity, duplicity, hiding something. You see, when you speak the truth, it doesn't need any clothes, right? If someone asks us, what's our name? And we are speaking the truth, you don't need any manipulation to that. But now if you have a fake passport, and someone asks what your name is, And someone asks what your name is, then we'll have to think a bit. Wherever there is falsity, there has to be covering over a covering over a covering over a covering, is it not? When you speak false, then now you have to remember the false. And then you have to cover the false. Shishiratha Anilamadhar Ki. So Krishna is teaching us. If you want to be accepted by me, you have to give up your cloth. Which means you have to give up hiding things. Only those who are truthful, non-duplicitous will come to me. No manipulation. Please understand this pastime is not a lusty pastime. It's a very instructive pastime. And now I want to mention one more thing. When the little girls were performing this vrat, what was the mantra that they were chanting? They were saying, please repeat, Sarvam, Shri, Krishnarpanam, Astu, Sarvam Shri Krishna Arpanamastu. What does that mean? We offer it to Shri Krishna. But there is a very interesting rahasya or secret hidden here. The word Krishna Arpanam has two meanings. Arpanam means to offer. For whom? Krishna. Or it can also mean Krishna Arpanam Astu. And Krishna in the feminine usage is the name for Draupadi. 
Our Acharyas explain when the gopis did this vrat and they said Sarvam Shri Krishna Arpanamastu. They were collecting their cloth and giving it to Krishna. That in the future there in the Kuru Sabha, Agre Kuruna, Mathapandavanam, Dushasanena, Ritavastra Kesha, Krishna Tada Krosha Dananyanatha, Govinda Damo Dharamadhaveti. When Krishna Draupadi will be stripped out of her cloth. Oh Krishna, please collect this cloth and offer it to her and what is the proof for this of course our acharyas have written this in the commentary but apart from that here the gopis young gopis are saying oh krishna krishna arpanamastu take this cloth for krishna in the future that is draupadi and there draupadi is calling out to krishna as govinda dwarka vasin krishna gopi janapriya there the gopis are calling Krishna as Krishna Arpanamastu Draupadi and Draupadi is calling out to Krishna as Gopi Janapriya. Go oh Krishna who is dear to the gopis, please protect me. And the gopis who are dear to Krishna thinking of Draupadi gave the cloth and Krishna simply collected that cloth and in the Kuru Sabha put them together as a big Bhandar Sari and gave it to Draupadi. Krishna appears in so many incarnations. Pralaya payodhi jale drita vana sibedam Vihita vahitra charetra makedam Keshava dreta mina sharira Keshava dreta mina sharira Jaya jagadesha hare Jai Jagadesh Hare Hare Jai Jagadesh Hare Krishna comes as Meena, Kurma, Varaha, Narasimha, Vamana, Parashurama, Rama, Balarama, Buddha, Kalki. But in the Kuru Sabha, because of the gopis, how did Krishna come? Keshavadhrita Vastra Sharira Keshavadhrita Vastra Sharira Jaya Jagadish Hare Jaya Jagadish Hare Hare Jaya Jagadish Hare Vastra Sharira Krishna came as cloth and where did that cloth come from? Gopanga nanam jaddukula chauram. So when we sing Braje Prasiddham Navanita chauram, we are praying to Krishna, make my heart as butter and come and steal it away. But then Krishna says, but for that there is a lot of cloth in you, which means in the lot of, there is a lot of duplicity and hypocrisy. Then we say, Gopanga nanam jaddukula chauram, please take away my hypocrisy. Please take it away. Chal kapat tyag dije, Guru ji ki seva kije. <laughs> if we want to give up chal and kapat, then we have to take shelter of Sri Guru. That's the next line. Aneka janmar jita papa chavaram. Krishna steals our sins. How does he do that? In the form of Sri Guru. We've all heard the word diksha. Diksha means initiation. But in Sanskrit, di and ksha, these two syllables have a specific meaning. Please everyone chant. Diyate jnana vairagyam. Kshiyate Papa Sanchaya Diyate Kshiyate Yasmat Sadiksha Iti Abhidhiyate That process by which the Guru gives knowledge and that process by which the disciple gives up sin. Diyate Jnana Vairagyam Kshiyate Papa Sanchaya Diyate Kshiyate Yasmat Sadikshetya Abhidhiyate Hari Bhakti Vilas describes this is Diksha. So Krishna in the third line, Aneka Janma Arjita Papa Chauram. Krishna is ready to take away our sins. Over so many lifetimes we are carrying sins. Kisi ko bura bola hua, wo paap hai. Kuch ganda dekha, kuch ganda bola, kuch ganda smaran kiya, kuch ganda shravan kiya, kuch, kuch eshtha kiya. All the bad activities that we have heard of, seen, done, spoken, all these sins we are carrying. At death, body gets done, finished. But these reactions continue over lifetimes. Aneka janma arjita papa chauram. And they are all like a big godam. 
a big go down of books. And what does Krishna do? He sets fire into it. The mountain of hay in the form of our sins is set ablaze by Krishna. By taking diksha from the lotus feet of a bona fide spiritual master. How to be free from sins? Om pavitra apavitro va sarvavasta gato piva yes maret pundari kaksham. So, bahya bhyantara hashuji. If you want to be free from sins, just remember Krishna. Yes, yes. Shravana matrena atva yasya smarana matrena janma samsara bandhanat vimuchyate namastasmai vishnave prabha vishnave. The Vishnu Sahasranam describes just by hearing about whom or just by remembering whom aneka janma arjita papa javram. Sins get destroyed. If we come close to the sun, automatically the light will come on to you. And if you turn away from him, there will be shadow. The shadow is the sin. And if you want to be away, be away from the shadow, what do we do? Just face the sun. Kechit kevalaya bhaktya vasudeva parayana agham dhunvanti karsneya niharami vabhaskara. Canto 6, chapter 1, text 15, Bhagavatam describes, just like all night it is dark, but just by the rising of the sun, the whole sky becomes lit up. Similarly, aneka janma arjita papa chauram, our heart is dark because of the sins. But when the sun of bhakti rises, the whole sky of our heart gets lit up to that king of thieves who's stealing not just the butter, but the butter of the heart. Not just the clothes, but the clothes of hypocrisy. And not just the sins of one, but the sins of everyone, just by remembering whom. To that king of thieves, Chauragraganyam Purusham Namami. So this is the purport to the first verse at the end of 35 minutes. I don't know what I'm going to do. We have seven more <laughs> verses to go. But we will see. As far as we can go. Let's do the second verse now. Shri Radhikaya Ridayasya Choram Navambhuda Shamala Kanti Choram Shri Radhikaya Padashritanam cha samastha choram Chauragraganyam purusham namami Shri Radhikaya Ridayasya Choram Navambuda Shamala Kanti Choram Pada Shrita Nam Chasamasta Choram Pada Shrita Nam Chasamasta Choram Pada Shrita Nam Pada Shrita Nam Chasamasta Choram Chauragraganyam Purusham Namami Chauragraganyam Purusham Namami I offer my respectful obeisances to the foremost of thieves. What line is that? Chauragraganyam Purusham Namami, who steals Srimati Radhika's heart. Shri Radhikaya, Ridayasya Chauram. And who steals the dark luster of a fresh rain cloud? Are you just guessing the translation with the next line of the Sanskrit? <laughs> yes, that is correct. Because Nava means freshly formed. Ambuda is the name for the cloud. And Shamala means the dark complexion. Kanti means the complexion. And Chauram means to steal. So he who steals the complexion, the dark complexion of the freshly formed rain cloud. And then he who steals all the sins and suffering of those who take shelter of his feet. Pada Ashritanam, those who take ashray of his pada, lotus feet, cha samasta Chauram. He is ready to steal all their sins. To that foremost of thieves, I bow down. 
See, if we don't know the meaning, then singing Chaurashtakam is Sangeet, is music. If we understand the meaning and we close our eyes and we meditate, then it becomes bhajan. Right? Then it becomes bhajan. Every word is very important. Every word. If you take a stone and you put it on, you throw it onto the ground, what happens? Nothing. It just falls like this. But if you take a stone and you put it in a pond, what happens? And then you see ripples and, you know, a disturbance formed. Even a small pebble. What does that mean? If our heart is like the floor, the gr ground, every phrase which is like a pebble will just fall and no meaning. We are singing. All these phrases are like pebbles and they are falling on the ground of our heart and nothing is happening. But if our heart is rasik, full of taste, sweetness like a pond, then you can just say, Shri Radhikaya Ridayasya Chauram. And ripples of pastimes are invoked in the heart. So this is very important. Each line can be chanted for a long, long time. Shri Radhikaya Ridayasya Chauram. Aha. Nava Ambuda Shyamala Kanti Chauram. Then it becomes bhajan. Then this chanting will bring us closer to Krishna. So let's discuss this now. Shri Radhikaya Ridayasya Chauram. And Nava Ambuda Shyamala Kanti Chauram. Two lines together. What is the complexion of Krishna? Like a rain cloud. And it's quite fascinating. Jayatu Jayatu Devo Devaki Nandanoyam Jayatu Jayatu Krishna Vrishni Vamsha Pradipa Now the line. Jayatu Jayatu Shyamala Komalango Jayatu Jayatu Prithvi Bharanasho Mukunda. So Mukunda Mala Stotra King Kulashekara says, I bow down to Krishna, Megha Shamala Komalango, who has a very soft body in the complexion of a rain cloud. Krishna's complexion is compared to the rain cloud, but Krishna's heart is compared to an ocean. How? Karuna Sindhu. Oh Krishna, who is the ocean of compassion. Hey Krishna Karuna Sindhu Dina Bandho Jagatpate Gopesh Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostute. So, Hey Krishna Karuna Sindhu, He whose heart is like an ocean of mercy. If mercy is like drop of water, then Krishna's heart is like an ocean. But that's his heart. But how is his complexion? Like a rain cloud. Now, this is interesting. What is the. Connection between the rain cloud and the ocean. Oh, there must be a sun in the middle. Because the water cycle is such that for the ocean to become a cloud, there must be the presence of the sun. This sun in Sanskrit is called Bhanu. And the sun rays are called Bhanu Nandini. Radharani. <laughs> so if Krishna is the ocean of nectar and sweetness, then Radharani is compared to the sun. How amazing. And between the ocean and the sun, you can see the sun is superior. Because it's ahead, on top. And the effect of the sun is such that the ocean becomes a rain cloud. If Krishna is the ocean and Radharani is the sun, then who is the cloud? Think very carefully. I'll, I'll repeat this again. If Krishna is the ocean and Radharani is the, rain, uh, is the sun, the heat of the sun causes the ocean to become a cloud. So if Krishna is the ocean and Radharani is the sun, then who is the cloud? Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, that is correct. <laughs> that is correct. And am I making this up? No, it is written by Srila Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur. Ridva pre nava bhakti sasya vitate sanjeevani swagama rambe kama tapartu dahadavani Srila Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur has written a book called Madhurya Kadambini. And in the introduction to this book, he says, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is a rain cloud. Why? 
रिद वप्रे नव भक्ति सस्य वितते संजीवनी स्वागम वट डज द रेन क्लाउड डू He says it pours rain, and by that, what happens? The fields who have the seeds, all those seeds fructify. Shila Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur says, "Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is like a rain cloud, who is giving the rain of rasa, of mercy. And what happens when there is rain? The field which is full of seeds, all those seeds fructify." and now you will start seeing crops in that field so shila vishuna chakravarti thakur says our heart is like a field and it has the seeds called shravanam kirtanam vishnu smaranam pada sevanam archanam vandanam dasyam sakhyam atma nivedanam which is not fructifying but when chaitanya mahaprabhu in the form of rain cloud he showers the rain of his mercy on the field of our heart then shravanam seed fructifies and we start to hear and kirtanam seed starts to fructify and we start to do kirtan and smaranam seed when we have not been uh, remembering krishna for so many lifetimes that uh, smaranam seed it starts to fructify and now we start remembering krishna and pada sevanam archanam these seeds of deity worship which we have not been watering for so many lifetimes they get nourished and now we start performing these activities Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is a rain cloud whose water rain water of compassion floods the field of our heart and these navavida bhakti in the form of seeds they fructify and we start to hear read chant remember and not just that what else happens when there is a rain cloud the cloud covers the sun what is the sun in our life it is the heat of lust and anger and pride and envy and jealousy whose sun heat has been troubling our heart So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in the form of rain cloud, he blocks this sun of distress, and the living entity no longer finds any anger, greed, envy, nothing. He's his his heart is very cooling and refresh, refreshing. It's like the temperature in Seattle. Always raining and gloomy and comfortable. <laughs> so next time you complain about the weather, please remember this is the rain cloud of Mahaprabhu's compassion. Don't complain that the sun is not seen. Be happy that the sun of distress has been blocked by the rain cloud of Mahaprabhu, and his rain in the form of his mercy has flooded the field of our heart and is uh, watering and fructifying the seeds of Shravanam and Kirtanam. Now we are starting to chant and read and remember. For so many lifetimes we could have, but we didn't come in contact with any devotees of Mahaprabhu. Therefore, we couldn't. and the final thing that the cloud does what does it do it floods to such an extent it gives rain and the cloud moves right but where is all that rain it's all in the the river and tributaries so vishwanath chakravarti thakur says mahaprabhu in the form of rain cloud 500 years ago for us he poured and the cloud disappeared but he left so many rivers in the form of rupa goswami sanatan goswami jiva goswami raghunath das goswami raghunath bhatta goswami vishwanath chakravarti baladev vidyabhushan narottam das thakur shamanand prabhu shrinivas acharya up to our shila prabhupada and beyond they are all like rivers coming from that rain cloud of mahaprabhu <laughs> therefore shri shila vishwanath chakravarti thakur says shri chaitanya kripa nirankusha maha madhurya kadambini I bow down to that Madhurya Kadambini, that rain cloud of mercy called Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, who has blessed the whole world in this manner. Did everyone uh, appreciate Shri Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur's poetic presentation of Mahaprabhu's uh, beauty? How wonderful! So why did we say this here? Because Shri Radhika ya Ridayasya Chauram, Krishna is like a ocean, and Radharani is like the sun. and stealing the sun rays which means radharani's complexion and radharani's mood of devotion the ocean called krishna has become the rain cloud called chaitanya mahaprabhu how wonderful <laughs> and what's the beauty of this rain cloud called chaitanya mahaprabhu he gets attracted to krishna who's in the complexion of a rain cloud nava ambuda shyamala kanti chaura So actually, this verse represents Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Sri Radhika ya Ridayasya Chauram, who stole the heart of Radha Krishna to become Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And how is that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu? He is getting attracted to Nava Ambuda Shyamala Kanti Chauram. He is getting attracted to Krishna, who is a rain cloud. 
And then now to experience this, Chaita, this rain cloud of Krishna, what did Chaitanya Mahaprabhu do? He gave up everything and he took sannyas. This is Padashritanam cha samasta chauram. In Krishna Leela we see, Krishna played the flute. He played in different, you see, in classical music there are seven notes. Sapta Swara. Sare Gama Padhani. And then the Sa is the starting Sa. But it's just the Tar Saptak. So there are seven notes. Sa Re Gama Padhani. Of which it is described the fifth note, Pa, Pancham Swara, is left only for the gopis. Krishna calls different camps with different notes. So if Krishna is saying, Sa, that's a certain camp he's calling. And if he calls Re, that's a different camp. Ga, Komal Ga, it's a different camp. Ma, different camp. Now if Krishna goes Pa, that is the gopis. If Krishna goes Dha, different camp. Ni, different camp. Only seven notes that we are aware of. But our Acharya has described Krishna has kept the eighth hidden note with the name of Radha. <laughs> How amazing. Now what that is, we'll have to find out only there. Till then, I can't answer the question because I don't know. So when Krishna plays the flute in the middle of the night, you can see the gopis left everything and they ran to him. And Krishna says in the Gita, Ye yathamam prapadhyante tam stataiva bhajam yaham. As you approach me, I will reciprocate. So if devotee gives Krishna 10%, what will Krishna give? 10%? If, Krishna, if devotee gives 50%, how much will Krishna reciprocate? 50%? Now the gopis have left their home in the middle of the night to go to the middle of the forest. 5,000 years ago when society would reject them. They didn't have the concept of sleepover. <laughs> or night out. In Vedic tradition, if you're outside at night, male or female, it's considered to be ghostly. Saak hechari ekadotpatya putana nanda gokulam yoshitva mayayatmanam pravishat kamacharini. Putana came at night. And Shukadev Goswami describes, well, she was so wicked. She used to travel at night. Now the actual night is the day. <laughs> right? <laughs> so 5,000 years ago, if a Mataji leaves her, of course, father's home to go into the father-in-law's home, now the gopis have do kula. Do and Kula, they have left both the families, father's family, father-in-law's family, hearing Krishna's flute and they have come into the middle of the forest. Young gopis in the middle of the night, in the middle of the forest to find Krishna. Now they know, Yadgatwa nani vartante. Once you go to the forest, you can't come back. With one-way ticket, they went to Brindavan, in literal sense. What, can, what does Krishna have to give them now? Nothing. What will Krishna give? If you give 50%, Krishna will reciprocate 50%. But if you are ready to leave your home in the middle of the night for him, what does Krishna have to give? He can't do that. He cannot do that. In the Gita, he said, Ye yathamam prapadyante. The way you approach, I will reciprocate. But Kaviraj Goswami says, Pratigya bhanga hoila gopira bhajane. By the bhajan of the gopis, Krishna's Ye yathamam prapadyante promise was broken. Because he said, Na pare ham niravadya samyujan swasadhu krityam vibudhayusha piva yama bhajan durjara geha shrinkalam samvrichayatat pratiyatu sadhuna. O gopis, I have nothing to give you. Whatever you have done, I have accepted it. May that be your reciprocation. But then Krishna thought a vacancy in his heart. Gajendra called out, I went. Draupadi calls out, I go. Pralat calls out, I go. Dhruva calls out, I go, and I reciprocate. But gopis in the middle of the night, just by hearing my flute, they have given up everything. Therefore, in the age of Kali Yuga, when I will become a devotee as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, in the middle of the night, I will give up my house and take sannyas. Only to find Krishna in Vrindavan. This is Gaura Leela. This is the history and the mystery of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's sannyas. When we think, why did Chaitanya Mahaprabhu take sannyas? Well, the external reason is he wanted to set an etiquette for preaching. But what is the heart of Krishna saying? He had to pay the debt back. 
If you cannot reciprocate, at least follow footsteps, Krishna. Oh dear Krishna, if you cannot reciprocate to the gopis, at least walk behind them, following their example. Krishna said, okay. When I will accept the complexion and mood of Sri Radha and come in this world as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, like the gopis left their home for me, I will enter Grihastashram and give it up to take sannyas for them. This is the mystery of Gaur Sanyas. This is Padashritanam cha samasta chauram. Chauragra ganyam purusham namami. Oh Krishna, you are such a great thief. In this world, have we seen a thief stealing from himself? Has there ever been a thief who steals from himself? Look at Krishna, he stole from himself. He stole from Radharani, her heart and her complexion and became Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and then stole his own Grihastashram and took sanyas. <laughs> because he became a devotee and padashritanam cha samasta chauram means if you become a devotee Krishna will take everything away <laughs> so when Ma Krishna became a devotee he renounced everything as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu he took from himself he stole from himself his own grihastha life and went on the street chanting Hari Harai Nama Krishna Jadabaya Nama Hari Harai O Jadavaya Madhavaya Keshavaya Namaha O Gopala Govinda Ram Shri Madhusudan O Giridhari Gopinath Madhanamoha O Hari Bol, Hari Bol, Hari Bol, Gaura Hari Bol Srila Vishwana Chakravarti Thakur says, please don't perform Vishwana. You see the deities and you come home. Somebody will give you mala. And what will their sales pitch be? Five minutes. All your problems will go away. One devotee I know in Australia, very amazing Vaishnav. <clears throat> he goes on the street. And he tells whomever he, so he dresses like a monk, which means, uh, you know, just he puts a chadar, he's in dhoti. He goes on the street and all Australians around. He tells them, I'm a monk from Nepal. And they all stand there. And he looks into their eyes and says, I see that there are problems in your life that you're not telling anyone. <laughs> and this, they're stunned. How does this monk know? And he says, not just that, I also know the solution to your problems. Do you see that I'm smiling? I said, yes, do you want to know the secret? Three and a half minutes, that's all. <laughs> Three and a half minutes. And he removes the 27 beads mala. Not even the 108 beads. 27, the little chotu mala. Amazing. Vaishnavas are ready to go to any extent. We know giving hand, he is giving finger. <laughs> Hold this little bead and then I'll pull you. He gives this little, and he says, three and a half minutes. Just repeat after me. And they with so much faith, they chant, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. Some after finishing, they say, can I do it once more? If you want, I'll even pay. <laughs> he says, you don't have to pay. You can do it once more. And they finish it, then he says, if you want, you can keep this mala as a gift from my side. You don't have to pay anything. He sponsors all those beads and he preaches like this and he has given more than 100,000 malas like this in the streets of Australia. <laughs> You're clapping. It starts with three and a half minutes. Where do you think it's going to land up? Two hours. <laughs> and that too between five and seven in the morning. And if you think that's all, no. Then after that there is Darshanarti. Then there is Bhagavatam class. 
Then after that, there is book distribution, there is home program, there is Anand Mela. <laughs> and in no time you will see Padashritanam Cha Samastha Chavram. Krishna has stolen not three and a half minutes, but 35 years of your life. And you're happily ready to cry, my Lord, I could only give you 35 years. I wish I chanted your name much more than that. This is Krishna. Srila Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur says, first he will take your time away. Then he will take your throat away. Because you will start chanting and speaking and singing. Before even knowing we are singing different melodies of Hare Krishna. And then the next thing he will do is he will steal your mind. And then before you know he will steal your heart. And then when that time comes you will pray, my Lord, please steal me to your lotus feet. Tena me Krishna padavje mana sandhir vidhiyatam. May there be a sandhi, a meeting between your lotus feet and my heart. But be ready for the next verse. It's the most dangerous verse of the Chaurashtakam. Akinchani Kritya Padashritam Ya Kairoti Bhekshum Pathi Gehahinam Kenapya ho bhishan chaurahedre Drishta shruto vana jagatra yepi Everyone together this time. Akinchani kritya padashritam ya karoti bhekshum pathi gehahinam Kenapya ho bhishan chaura idre Drishta shruto va na jagatra yepi O drishta shruto va na jagatra yepi Very dangerous verse. What Krishna's Chaitanya Mahaprabhu did and what the gopis as devotees did, Krishna is going to do to all of us. What is that? Srila Bilva Mangal Thakur says, Padashritam ya. If you get to him, then Akinchani Kritya. He will take everything away from you and Karoti Bhikshum Pathi Geha Hinam. Without a path and without a home, he will make us homeless beggars. Srila Bilvamangal Thakur says, A kinchani. The word kinchana means little. Hmm? Kinchana. A kinchana means not even so much he will have or leave behind for us. A kinchani kritya. Hame asa banakar. Padashritam yaha. If you take shelter of him, karoti bhikshum pathi geha hinam. Without a path, Without a home, he will make us a wandering beggar. What does that mean? Everyone will move towards sannyas. Very few are saying Haribo. <laughs> but what is sannyas? It doesn't mean having a danda. Sannyas means even if you are amidst millions and millions of dollars and you feel that's actually not what I'm looking for. This is sannyas. You could be amidst mountains of Lakshmi without attraction. It's coming, you're using it for household activity, but you're thinking at the end of it all, I'm looking for Krishna, not Lakshmi. I'm not trying to perform bhakti to scratch Lakshmi out of Krishna. I'm making money for my family, but at the end of it all, when death comes, I will leave it behind. What I'm actually looking for is Krishna. So even in our own home, we will be living there. Padma Patram Ivam Bhasa. Even if the house is like a muddy pool, one will live like a lotus. This is what it means. San Nyasa. Nyasa means surrender. And San means Samyak Rupena. Even being Grihasthas, one can be sannyasis. One doesn't have to give up one's home. 
One may make money, one may have children, one may have a job, but at the end of it all, paropakarartham idam shariram. I am living a life for others. This is the mood. This should be the understanding. Bilba Mangal Thakur says, if you perform Krishna Bhakti, this is the sannyas that one will come to. Selflessness. Such a great thief. He will give you Lakshmi, but no taste for it. How amazing. He will take away the taste. Kena pyaho bhishana chaura idrik. Bhishana chaura means such a dangerous thief. Drishta shrutova na jagatrayepi. The three worlds have not heard or seen such a great dangerous thief. He will take away Lakshmi also. There will be some fundraising, there will be some event, there will be some festival. We will give in charity, but still we will make money. Still the money that we have also will not be attached. Somebody needs something, we will readily give. This is sannyas. Therefore, Srimati Radharani has said, nobody should hear Krishna Katha. Sure, nobody should hear Krishna Katha. Which is the verse there where she says that? She says, Tava Kathamritam Tapta Jeevanam Kavi Bhiriditam Kalmashapaham Shravana Mangalam Srimad Atatam Bhuvi Grinantiye Bhuri Dajana. You will say, the meaning is exact opposite than what you are explaining. The meaning is Tava Katha Amritam. Oh Krishna, your Katha is Amrit. But Srimati Radharani is saying, Tava Katha Amritam. Not Tava Katha Amritam. Krishna, your Katha is not Amrit. Tava Katha Amritam. If somebody hears your Katha, they will become so attracted that Amritam, they will die materially. Ghar bar chhod kar brindavan jayenge. Bhaagenge gali gali. Bandhu sange jodi tava ranga parihas Thake abhilas Thake abhilas Mathuraya keshi tirtha Ghaate rasakash Smera bhangi traya parichita saachi vistirna drishti Vamshi nyasta adara kishalayam ujjvalam chandra kena Govind akhyam harita numiha keshi tirthopa kanthe Maa prekshishtha stava yadi sakhe bandhu sange isti rangaha Rupa Goswami Pad has said, if you want to be happy in this world, cutting jokes with friends and family, please, please, please don't go to Brindavan and see Krishna. Because if you go on the banks of Jamuna and have darshan of Radharaman, then everything will go away. Then we will come to that point when Brajitya ji ke mein kahi nahi jao. Brajitya ji ke mein Kahi na hi jau Rasi ki santan ke Darshan pao Jag se priti hatai Radha naam param sukhdai Chant in the name of Radha and Krishna They will say, oh when or when will that day be mine? My feet will be in this world but my eyes will be in Vrindavan. This is Akin Chani Kritya Bhata Shutamya. For lifetimes we have been thinking my home will be like this, my family will be like this. But now after performing Krishna Bhakti, what is the home? Vrindavan. What is the family? Vaishnavas. This is Akin Chani Kritya. We will not keep anything for oneself. And you want to give everything for Krishna. Akin Chani Kritya Pada Shutamya. Karoti Bhikshum Pati Gehahina. Radharani says, Tava Katha Mritam. Don't hear about Krishna. Because your life will become like mine, she's saying. How? Tapta Jeevana. My life will become like being on a frying pan. No taste materially, and Krishna's not giving darshan. The word Bhurida in Sanskrit means profusely magnanimous donor. So Radharani says. The preachers are the greatest donors because they give Krishna everywhere. But in Sanskrit, the word da also means to kill. So, bhuri da means the preachers are the greatest serial killers. <laughs> because they walk around home to home killing their material life. And telling them, Chalo man shri brindavan dham. 
<laughs> this is what they are preaching. <laughs> to go to Brindavan, to take shelter of Krishna. Huh? This is the mood. So Radharani says, You'll, your life will become Bahavaha Iva Vihanga. Bhikshu Charyam Charanti. You will become like a nest or homeless bird flapping your wings from branch to branch looking, where is my Krishna? Where is my Krishna? Where is my Krishna? Amar Krishna Kothai. Raghunath Das Goswami was like this. Kothai go prema mai Radhe 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 go jaya Radhe Radhe Kothai go prema mai Radhe Radhe it is described Srila Raghunath Das Goswami for 50 years on the banks of Radha Kun will roll day and night calling out Ha Radha, Ha Radha, Ha Radha, Ha Radha, Ha Radha with tears coming from his eyes. And the sadhus in Radha Kun would pray to Radharani. Aap hame darshan do na do in Baba ko de do. You don't give us darshan but you give darshan to this sadhu. He's crying so much in separation from you. छप्पन दंड रात्रि दिने जाने न राधा गोविंद बिने चारी दंडी शूटी था के स्वप्ने राधा गोविंद देखे रघुनाथ दास गोस्वामी इट इस डिस्क्राइब 22 एंड हाफ आवर्स ही वुड कॉल आउट हा राधा हा राधा हा राधा विथ टीयर्स एंड वन एंड हाफ आवर्स ही वुड गो टू स्लीप व्हाई स्वप्ने राधा गोविंद देखे 22 � this will become the situation for those who do bhajan. Please understand. Srila Prabhupada said, We think the world is crazy. The world thinks we are crazy. But the difference is, they are wrong and we are right. Srila <laughs> <laughs> Prabhupada would say, In the material sense, crying is the greatest source of pain. But in the spiritual sense, crying for Krishna is the greatest source of joy. Tears will stream from the eyes if you do bhajan. And we will think, my Lord, whatever I have, it is for the Vaishnavas. Whatever I have, it is for the devotees. Whatever I have, it is for Guru and for you. I don't want anything. Have you ever seen a thief like this? Who doesn't steal? The owners of the house are coming and telling the thief, please take it. Aisa chor hai, Sham Sundar. Drishta shrutova na jagatraye pi. Three worlds have never heard or seen such a thief who is so attractive. The day and night the host of the house are praying, may this thief break into my house. And even if he doesn't, I will go to his house, Brindavan, and give it to him. Haribo. Greatest source of ecstasy. But till then, what is our only life? That is the fourth verse. Srila Bilva Mangal Thakur. Now I'm going to go very fast because we have only about 10 minutes. So I'm going to go a little fast. Srila Bilva Mangal Thakur, now he says in the fourth verse, Yadi nama piharatya shesham Giri prasarana pi paparashin Ashtarya rupa nanu chaurai drek Drishta shruto vana mayakadhapi Mere utterance of his name plunges one, oh, purges one of mountain of sins. Such an astonishingly wonderful thief I have never seen or heard anywhere. Just jinka naam itana bada chor hai. If Krishna's name is such a big thief, what to speak of Krishna? Please everyone chant. Narayana Nama Narayana Nama Naro Naranam Prasiddha Chaura Kathita Prithivyam 
ಅನೇಕ ಜನ್ಮಾರ್ಜಿತ ಪಾಪ ಸಂಚಯ ಹರತಿ ಅಶೇಷ ಶ್ರುತಿ ಮಾತ್ರ ದ ವಾಯು ಪುರಾಣ ಅವ್ರ ಪುರಾಣ ಇಸ್ ಡಿಸ್ಕ್ರೈಬ್ ನಾರಾಯಣ ನಾಮ ನರೋ ನರಾಣ ಪ್ರಸಿದ್ಧ ಚೌರ ಕಥಿತ ಪೃಥಿವ್ಯಾಂ ಅನೇಕ ಜನ್ಮಾರ್ಜಿತ ಪಾಪ ಸಂಚಯ ಹರತಿ ಅಶೇಷ ಶ್ರುತಿ ಮಾತ್ರ ದ ಗ್ರೇಟೆಸ್ಟ್ ಥೀಫ್ ಅನೌನ್ಸ್ಡ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಫೋರ್ ವೇದರ್ಸ್ ಇಸ್ ದ ನೇಮ್ ಆಫ್ ನಾರಾಯಣ ವಾಯ್ ಹರತಿ ಅಶೇಷ ಶ್ರುತಿ ಮಾತ್ರ ಜಸ್ಟ್ ಬೈ ಹಿಯರಿಂಗ್ ದ ಲಾರ್ಡ್ಸ್ ನೇಮ್ ಸಿನ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ಸ್ಟೋಲನ್ ಯು ಡೋಂಟ್ ಇವನ್ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಟು ಚೆಂಟ್ am i saying this no vyasadev is saying it shruti matram if you just hear the name if you go out on hari naam sankirtan and you're chanting and people are just you know eating or talking and they casually hear the holy name harati ashesham shruti matram eva you become an instrument of the lord's compassion because they lose their sins just by hearing the holy name from your lips bhagavatam describes please chant yan naam shruti matrena ಪುಮಾನ್ ಭವತಿ ನಿರ್ಮಲ ಪುಮಾನ್ ಹ್ಯೂಮನ್ ಬೀಂಗ್ಸ್ ಭವತಿ ನಿರ್ಮಲ ದೇ ಬಿಕಮ್ ಸಿನ್ಲೆಸ್ ಹೌ ಎನ್ ನಾಮ ಶ್ರುತಿ ಮಾತ್ರೇಣ ಜಸ್ಟ್ ಬೈ ಚಾಂಟಿಂಗ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಹಿಯರಿಂಗ್ ಸೊ ವೆನ್ ಪ್ರಭುಪಾದ್ ಸೇಸ್ ಚಾನ್ ಜಪ ಅಂಡ್ ಹಿಯರ್ ದಟ್ ಇಸ್ ದ ಫಾಸ್ಟೆಸ್ಟ್ ವೇ ಟು ಕ್ಲೆನ್ಸ್ ದ ಹರ್ಟ್ ಇನ್ ಭಕ್ತಿ ಸಂದರ್ಭ ಶೀಲ ಜೀವ ಗೋಸ್ವಾಮಿ ಸೇಸ್ ಶುದ್ಧೇ ಚ ಅಂತಕರಣೆ ತದ್ ಯೋಗ್ಯತಾ ಭವತಿ ಬೈ ಚಾಂಟಿಂಗ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಹಿಯರಿಂಗ್ ಕೃಷ್ಣಸ್ ನೇಮ್ ಹಾರ್ಟ್ ಗೆಟ್ಸ್ ಕ್ಲೆನ್ಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ವಿ ವಿಲ್ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ದರ್ಶನ್ ಆಫ್ ಕೃಷ್ಣಸ್ ಫಾರ್ಮ್ just by hearing the sound vibration when prabhupada says chant with your tongue and hear with your ear this is the essence of all shastra please everyone chant nahi bhagavan nahi bhagavan aghatitam idam tvad darshanat nrunam akhila papakshaya yan nama sakrit shravanat pukka shopi ವಿಮೋಚ್ಯತೆ ಸಂಸಾರಾತ್ ದ ಸಿಕ್ಸ್ತ್ ಕ್ಯಾಂಟೋ ಸಿಕ್ಸ್ಟೀನ್ತ್ ಚಾಪ್ಟರ್ ಭಾಗವತಂ ಡಿಸ್ಕ್ರೈಬ್ಸ್ ಓ ಮೈ ಲಾರ್ಡ್ ಈವನ್ ದ ಮೋಸ್ಟ್ ಫಾಲನ್ ಪರ್ಸನ್ ಇಫ್ ಯು ಜಸ್ಟ್ ಕ್ಯಾಶುಲಿ ಹಿಯರ್ಸ್ ಯುವರ್ ಹೋಲಿ ನೇಮ್ ಹಿ ಬಿಕಮ್ಸ್ ಫ್ರೀ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಸಿನ್ ದೆನ್ ವಾಟ್ ಟು ಸ್ಪೀಕ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ಅಸ್ಟಾನಿಶ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಬೀಂಗ್ ಫ್ರೀ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಸಿನ್ಸ್ ಬೈ ಲುಕಿಂಗ್ ಎಟ್ ಯು ದಟ್ಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ವೆರಿ ಅಸ್ಟಾನಿಶಿಂಗ್ ಜಸ್ಟ್ ಬೈ ಹಿಯರಿಂಗ್ ಯುವರ್ ನೇಮ್ ಕ್ಯಾಶುಲಿ ವಿತೌಟ್ ಡಿವೋಷನ್ ಒನ್ಸ್ ಅ ಪರ್ಸನ್ ವಿತೌಟ್ ಡಿವೋಷನ್ ಇಸ್ ಹಿಯರಿಂಗ್ ಸ್ಟಿಲ್ ಸಿನ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ಲಾಸ್ಟ್ such a great thief think about the life of mrigari mrigari just chanted and his life transformed think about jagai madhai they chanted their lives transformed think about ajamil kwachaham kitava papam brahmagno nirapatrapa kwacha narayana iti etad bhagavan nama mangalam Ajamil and the brink of death he is thinking I am such a fallen person the only good thing that happened is these four syllables na ra ya na many missed the first syllable so we'll do it again because it's not four syllables na ra ya na it's described these four are the essence of the four vedas ajamil said there was no good qualities in my life but just these four syllables came out of my lips and bhagavan nama mangalam these four syllables lifted me air lifted me from the four directions how amazing so many examples where the name protects pralad maharaj chanted the holy name narsingha broke the pillar for him dhruva maharaj chanted the holy name all his material and spiritual desires came true ಸ್ಥಾನಾಭಿಲಾಷಿ ತಪಸಿ ಸ್ಥಿತೋಹಂ ತ್ವಂ ಪ್ರಾಪ್ತವಾನ್ ದೇವ ಮುನೀಂದ್ರ ಗುಹ್ಯಂ ಕಾಚನ್ ವಿಚಿನ್ವನ್ ಅಪಿ ದಿವ್ಯ ರತ್ನ ಸ್ವಾಮಿನ್ ಕೃತಾರ್ಥೋಸ್ಮಿ ವರಂ ನ ಯಾಚೆ ಭಕ್ತಿ ಮುಹು ಪ್ರವಹತಾಂ ತ್ವೈಮೇ ಪ್ರಸಂಗೋ ಭೂಯಾದನಂತ ಮಹತಾಂ ಅಮಲಾಶಯಾಂ ಯೇನಾಂಜಸೋಲ್ ಬಣ ಮುರು ವ್ಯಸನ ಭವಾಬ್ಧಿಂ ನೇಶ್ಯೇ ಭವದ್ ಗುಣ ಕಥಾಮೃತ ಪಾನ ಮತ್ತ ಯೋಂತ ಪ್ರವಿಶ್ಯ ಮಮ ವಾಚ ಮಿಮಂ ಪ್ರಸುಪ್ತ ಸಂಜೀವ ಯತ್ಯಖಿಲ ಶಕ್ತಿ ಧರಸ್ವ ಧಾಮ್ನ ಅನ್ಯಾಂಶ ಹಸ್ತ ಚರಣ ಶ್ರವಣ ತ್ವಕ್ ಆದೀನ್ ಪ್ರಾಣಾನ್ ನಮೋ ಭಗವತೆ ಪುರುಷಾಯ ತುಭ್ಯಂ ಧ್ರುವ ಮಹಾರಾಜ್ ಸೇಸ್ ಮೈ ಲಾಡ್ ದ ಓನ್ಲಿ ಗುಡ್ ಫಾರ್ಚ್ಯೂನ್ ಇನ್ ಮೈ ಲೈಫ್ ವಾಸ್ ಚಾಂಟಿಂಗ್ ಯುವರ್ ಹೋಲಿ ನೇಮ್ ಐ ಚಾಂಟೆಡ್ ಯುವರ್ ಹೋಲಿ ನೇಮ್ ಆನ್ ಮೈ ಥಾಂಗ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಬಾಸ್ ಮೆಟೀರಿಯಲ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಸ್ಪಿರಿಚುಯಲ್ ಡಿಸೈರ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ಫುಲ್ಫಿಲ್ಡ್ ಥಿಂಕ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ಹರಿದಾಸ್ ಠಾಕೂರ್ ವೆನ್ ಹಿ ವಾಸ್ ಬೀಂಗ್ ವಿಪ್ಟ್ ಇನ್ ಟ್ವೆಂಟಿ ಟೂ ಮಾರ್ಕೆಟ್ ಪ್ಲೇಸಸ್ ಹೂ
माद्रिक प्रपन्न पशुपाश विमोक्षणाय मुक्ताय भूरी करुणाय नमोलयाय स्वामशे न सर्वतनु भृत मनसी प्रतीत प्रत्यक दृशे भगवते पुरुषे नमस्ते व्हेन ही वाज कॉलिंग आउट नारायण आखिल गुरु भगवन नमस्ते द सुप्रीम लॉर्ड केम ऑन द पावर ऑफ द होली नेम सो हियर बिल्व मंगल ठाकुर सेस आई डोंट इवन वांट टू डिस्क्राइब सच हाउ बिग अ थीफ यू आर कृष्णा यदि ये नामापी हरति अशेषम If your name is such a big thief, तो रूप का तो फिर कहना ही क्या? Your form is also a great thief. Just by looking at you, eyes are stuck. The fruit vendor came to sell kela, seb, anar, all these fruits, and she came. Kela le lo, apple le lo, grapes le lo, watermelon le lo, and she looked at Krishna. Govind le lo. दामोदर ले लो माधव ले लो जस्ट बाय द फॉर्म सध्यो ऋद्य वृद्ध तेत्रकृति भी शुश्रूष भी तत्ण वेन कृष्ण एंटर द हार्ट ही डजेंट लीव वी आर बेगिंग हिम टू एंटर ही डजेंट एंटर एंड वंस ही एंटर्स इवन इफ यू वॉन्ट हिम टू लीव ही विल नॉट लीव ही इज वन ऑफ दोज टेनेंट्स यू इन्वाइट दे विल सेल कम नेक्स्ट मंथ ठीक है दे विल कम नाउ वेन यू एस देम टू लीव दे विल नेवर लीव The greatest example of that is Krishna. His form is so attractive. Sharadu dashaye sadu jat sat sarasi jo dhara Shri Mujhadrisha Surathanath te Ashul Kadasi ka varad nignato neha kimvada. The gopis are saying, Krishna, you are such a great thief. Now look at the poetic description here. In your heart, remember the forest of Brindavan on the night of Sharad Purnima. you can hear the sound of the stream of jamuna completely dark the sky is lit up with the full moon and the moon beams and the moonlight is coming through the hustling of the leaves and the trees you can hear the sound of the crickets at night and the trees are all moving by the breeze of brindavan very beautiful lotus flowers some pink and some blue and some golden and some white in the waters of the jamuna and their fragrance have permeated the whole environment of shri brindavan these lotuses are filled with the gathering of the humming of the honey bees and every bird and every animal is looking through the forest groves to see the form of brajendra nandan shyama sundar shri krishna such a beautiful picture in the heart is it not the gopis are saying oh krishna in the autumn season the ponds are very clean because monsoon has just passed so in the monsoon season the ponds are over flooded with fresh water so in the autumn season in october november the ponds are clean with fresh water and in that the lotuses are very beautiful and the central whirl are even more beautiful and krishna you are such a big thief that your eyes have stolen the beauty not of the forest but of the whirl of the lotus in the jamuna in the forest of shri brindavan at night the most beautiful form of beauty is the world of the lotus flower in the jamuna in the forest and your eye drusha has stolen it which means when you look at it your beauty is so much more that no one wants to see there they all want to see your eyes how amazing if krishna's eyes are so beautiful what to speak of his face and what to speak of his smile and what to speak of his lips madhuram madhuram va purasya vibho मधुरम मधुरम वदनम मधुरम मधुगंधि मृदुस्मित में तदहो मधुरम 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 दिस इज हाउ ब्यूटिफुल कृष्ण इज हिज नेम हिज फॉर्म हिज क्वालिटीज हिज पैस टाइम्स ऑल वेरी अट्रैक्टिव श्रुवा गुणान भुवन सुंदर शृण्वताम ये निर्विश्य कर्ण विवर हर तो गतापम जस्ट बाय हियरिंग हिज क्वालिटीज रुक्मिणी लॉस्ट हर हार्ट टू कृष्ण यू गो टू वृंदावन वंस एंड यू कम बैक विथ अ टी शर्ट विथ सेस I lost my heart in Brindavan. Everybody loses their heart in Brindavan, is it not? First time you come, you see Radha Raman, you see Govardhan, you see our Krishna Balaram, Radha Sham Sundar. How beautiful! When you leave, you feel like, ah, oh, when will I come back? The dham is so attractive, the form, the deities, the name, 
the bhajans, everything is so attractive. Bilma Mangal Thakur says, Drishta shrutova na maya kadapi. Kam se kam mene aisa chor ke vishay mein na dekha hai na suna hai. Drishta shrutova na maya kadapi. I have. Dhainam cha maainam cha tathendriyani Pranan cha ritva mama sarvameva Pailaya se kutra dhrita dhya chora Tvam bhakti dhāna simaya niruddha Bilva Mangal Thakur says, Dhanam, manam, indriyani, pranan, you steal everything away. Sabh kuch chori kar lete hain Thakur ji. Krishna has stolen. When you come to the temple, mind doesn't go to the movie. But when we go to the movie, mind will still come to the temple. This is the proof of advancement. Palaya se kutra. Srila Bilva Mangal Thakur says, Palaya se kutra, kaha bhago ge ab? Hey Krishna. Dhrita, I have caught you. How? Bhakti damna. With the rope of my devotion, Maya Niruddha, I have bound you, O Krishna, hey Chaura, O thief, Adya, today, please tell me where can you run? Have you seen many times they have this, uh, what do you call it? The three legged race? I had it in the childhood. What do you call it in America? I don't know. Where two, two people, they tie one of their legs and they have to run. Yeah, right. Sack, they, they tie it to the leg, right? Right, what is it called? Sacrace, yes, sacrace. That is how it is, the life of a devotee. Krishna cannot leave the devotee and run. And devotee cannot leave Krishna and run. Maya is pulling the devotee. Devotee cannot because he is bound to Krishna in a sacrace. And that sack, sack is called Bhakti Sack. Tvam Bhakti Damna Si Maya Nirudh. Krishna cannot leave because he is bound by the ropes of love. Devotee cannot leave because he is attracted to Krishna. They are mutually bound. Krishna wants to serve the devotee. Devotee wants to serve Krishna. Mutual binding. You can see in every yuga, every yuga devotee is bound for, by the Lord or bound for the Lord, let's say. In Satya Yuga you can see Bali Maharaj was bound by Vamande. Correct? Ropes of love. <laughs> in Treta Yuga, you had Hanuman who was ready to be bound by Ravan or to see Ravan, let's put it like that, in the fight with his son. When Hanuman in the Sundar Khan, he attacked Lanka and he entered Ashok Vatika, he could have destroyed and uprooted everything. But because he wanted to see Ravan face to face and give him some advice, he was ready to be bound. <laughs> he is Pavanaputra, breeze is everywhere, breeze cannot be bound. But his son is bound here. Because he wanted to give some Rama Bhakti to Ravan. Vibhishan was bound by the ropes of love. Therefore, he left Ravan's camp and came to Sakradeva Prapanno Yastava Smiti Sayachati. He came to Ramachandra. In Kali Yuga, you can see Sanatan Goswami, Rup Goswami were bound in the jail. <laughs> they were imprisoned. In every Yuga, the devotee is bound for the Lord. What Yuga is left? Dwapar Yuga. When Mother Yashoda was taking the rope and trying again and again and again and again, all the Shaktis of Krishna stood up and said, you cannot bind our Lord. At that time, Krishna told his Shaktis. Srila Vishwana Chakravarti Thakur says, one queen Shakti manifested in the form of Karuna Shakti. It's almost like Krishna is telling his Shaktis, now all of you back off because in all generations, the devotees were bound for me. Bali Maharaj was bound for Vamana. Sanatan Goswami is imprisoned for Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Hanuman is bound for Ram. There's one yuga left. Dwapar yuga. If three yugas devotees can be bound for me, can't I get bound by my devotee in one yuga? Thinking like this, Krishna took the rope and he bound himself in Damodar Leela. <laughs> Bilva Mangala Thakur is writing. Where can you run now? You are bound by me. 
काष्टो यद्यपि भिद्यते वनचरे नुग्रेण भृंगेण वै तेन वाद्य न छिद्यते भुज पलाश सीधु मत्तालिना इत्या स्वाद्य विगूड तत्व मतुलम बाल्ये पी ये नो दितम तम दामो दर भृंग भूप मनीषम बंदे ये शोधा सुतम दामोदर लीला इस ग्लोरिफाइड सो मच इट्स दे ओनली लीला वेर कृष्णा गेट्स पनिश्ड एंड जनरली व्हेन समवन गेट्स पनिश्ड वी फॉरगेट इट राइट but here we have taken a photo and we put it on the altar and we remind him for 30 days every year. Tum bholo na bholo, hum yaad rakhenge. Tumhe bhi yaad dilayenge. Damodra ashtakam likhenge tum par. Question is, what is so great about Krishna being bound by ropes? Usme kya hai? Bacche ne masti kiya, maa ne baan diya. Usme itni badi baat khichni ki kya hai vashakta. Pura adhyay dasham skand mein hai Damodra lila. And then you write an ashtakam on it, and then you call him Damodar, then you show ghee lamp, then you paint, then you have deities, then there is Ukhal Vandan in Gokul Mahavan. What is so special about this Leela? It could be a question. So the answer given is, Kashto yadhyapi bhidhyate vanachare no grena bhringena vai. Although a very ferocious, angry bumblebee, when it is agitated, it can break through wood. You see, it's a natural phenomenon. You can see a bumblebee when it's very angry and agitated. It can cut through wood. When it's really intense, like a woodpecker, it can go through wood. But that same bumblebee or honeybee, when it lands on the nectar, on the whorl of a lotus flower, and it ends up drinking the nectar, what happens? It is so intoxicated drinking the nectar of the whorl of the lotus flower from sunrise to sunset that at sunset the petals are closing and this honeybee who has the power to break through wood loses the power even to cut through the petals. And it's ready to die but not leave that nectar. What am I talking about? What we are saying is Iti aswadya viguda tattva matulam bhalye piyeno ditam. Krishna taught this principle right in his childhood. How? Krishna is like a bumblebee. What is Krishna like? A bumblebee. When he is angry, he can cut through the wood. And what is the wood? Akasur, Bakasur, Dhenukasur, Vatsasur, Arishtasur, Putana, Trinavarta. All of this. Kamsa, Ravana, Shishupal, Dantavakra, Hiranyakashipu, Hiranyaksha. They are all like wood. And when Krishna gets agitated, when Krishna gets agitated, he can cut through the wood of the demoniac forces. But that same bumblebee Krishna, when he lands on the lotus flower called Mother Yashoda's heart and starts drinking the nectar honey of her Vatsalya Prem, this honeybee called Krishna is so intoxicated drinking the Vatsalya Matra Sneha honey of the lotus flower of Mother Yashoda's heart that when the petals in the form of the rope bind him, he who has the power to break through the wood is so intoxicated, he loses the power even to cut through the petals. Tam damo dara bhringa bhupa manisham vande yashoda sutam. I bow down to the king of bumblebees, the son of mother yashoda damodar. So here, Bilva Mangal Thakur says, palaya se kutra. My heart is like a lotus flower and the nectar of my bhakti has bound you, O Krishna. Ab bhaagoge to bhaagoge kaha? Where will you go? Krishna is saying same to you. You can't leave me and I will not leave you. This is the nectar. This is amazing. And at this point, Shripad Bilva Mangal Thakur, 6, 7 and 8, we will do it together. Chenatsi ghoram yama pasha bandham Bhenatsi bhimam bhava pasha bandham Chinatsi sarvasya samasta bandham Naivatmano bhakta kritam tu bandham Naivatmano bhakta kritam tu bandham Bilva Mangal Thakur says, Chinatsi ghoram yamapasha bandham. 
you are ready to cut the yamapash for ajamil and bhinatsi bhimam bhavapasha bandham if someone is caught by repeated birth and death by chanting your holy name you are re ready to liberate them but naiva atmano bhakta kritam tu bandham when mother yashoda bound you you can't even release yourself how selfless is krishna look in the damodar leela mukti kahe gopal se meri mukti bataye मुक्ति कहे गोपाल से मेरी मुक्ति बताएं ब्रजरज उड़े और मस्तक लगाए तो मुक्ति मुक्त है जाए <laughs> मुक्ति देवी इज कमिंग टू कृष्णा इन सेइंग यू हैव गिवन मी सर्विस टू लिबरेट एवरीवन व्हेन विल यू लिबरेट मी फ्रॉम दिस सर्विस सो व्हाट इज कृष्णा डूइंग टेकिंग सम फुट डस्ट ऑफ वृंदावन डस्ट फ्रॉम हिज लोटस फीट एंड पुटिंग ऑन द फोर ऑफ मुक्ति देवी मुक्ति मुक्त हो जाए कृष्ण कैन लिबरेट एवरी but when mother yashoda bound him he couldn't liberate himself you can see kuvera atma jau baddha murtya iva yatvat tvaya mochito bhakti bhajau krita uchcha tatha prema bhaktim swakham me prayachcha namokshe graho me sti damodare ha krishna was bound but then he looked around to see who else was bound think about it manigriv nala kuvera as the two yamalarjun trees always existed but all glories all glories to mother yashoda who made krishna bound for the first time see till then krishna was always running around so he never realized who was bound for the first time when mother yashoda bound him he started looking everyone is moving except me well let me try to find like minded friends and that's when his eyes went to the two trees and he thought oh ho oh, oh, ho oh, oh. ho I am standing here for 2 minutes and I am having so much pain these two trees have been standing for such a long time mai chhutu na chhutu inko mukt karunga even if i don't liberate myself i will liberate them thinking like this krishna started crawling with his bondage what is the lesson for all of us even if we are bound in this world we should go around to preach to liberate others although we are bound in this world like damodar we should look in the forest of this material world who else is bound and we should walk to them the trees didn't come for their class damodar went door to door he went to the trees and uprooted them and the lesson that we can learn as soon as krishna uprooted the trees nanda maharaj came and released krishna what does that mean it means even if we are bound in this world if we preach to liberate others our father will come to liberate us for krishna his father was nanda but for us krishna is our father praradham sakalam sahasva manujo shamam sada chintaya vasam swikuru dhamni sakta manasa vandasva damodaram ittya swadya viguda tatvam shastra describes that through the liberation of manigriva and nalakuver four lessons were taught in this world वित्तेन्द्रात्मजयोर वितारकमहम श्री नारदम तम भजे वॉट वर द फोर लेसन्स दैट वी कैन लर्न फ्रॉम द लिबरेशन ऑफ दीज टू ट्रीज फर्स्ट प्रारब्धम सकलम सहस्व एज द टू सन्स ऑफ कुबेर दे टॉलरेटेड द कर्स बाय नारद वी शुड लर्न टू टॉलरेट एवरीथिंग दैट कम्स अवर वे क्वाइटली दे बिकेम ट्रीज दे डिन कंप्लेन दे डिन लॉज एनी कंप्लेन टॉलरेट एंड सेकेंड श्यामम सदा चिंतय always remember krishna while they were in the courtyard of nanda maharaj always looking for krishna third vasam swikuru dhamni sakta manasa always live close to krishna they lived in nanda bhavan you are living close to seattle vedic cultural center it's the same we are living close to krishna and fourth vandasva damodaram whenever you see him bow down the true tree saw that damodar came between them they jumped and offered obeisances in the form of the uprooting If you do this, then what will happen? These four things: tarhi prapsasite swarupa miti da taaye na shiksha pura vitte indrat ma jayor vitara kamaham shri naradam tam bhaje. Just like the two trees got their swarup, eternal abode, eternal identity, we will also attain our eternal identity if we do these four things. Tolerate all reversals like the trees. Always remember Krishna. Live close to his home and offer obeisances when you see him. If you do this. narada muni is teaching us just like the two trees got their swarup in the spiritual world what did the two trees become in goloka brindavan madhukantha and snigdakantha 
those were the two names manigriv nalakuver became two trees and the two trees became madukantha and snigdha kantha and what was their eternal service to go from home to home and to liberate others by singing krishna katha so krishna here here you can see krishna himself was bound but he was liberating others mukti pradata sarvesham vishnu reva nasamshaya as the liberation the giver of liberation so here shripad bilbamangal thakur is saying others are calling out to you you are able to cut the yamapash like for ajamil you are ready to cut the bhavapash repeated birth and death bhava jaladi gatanam dwandva vata hatanam suta duritra kalatra प्राण भारादिता विषम विषय तो ये मज्जता मलवानी शरण मेको विष्णुपोतो नाण दोज हु आर स्टक् ड्राउनिंग इन दि ओशन ऑफ दिस वर्ल्ड यू आर रेडी टू लिफ्ट दम अप यू आर रेडी टू डू इट बट अपने आप के लिए आप कर नहीं पाते क्योंकि भक्त के भक्ति पाश में आप बद्ध हो प्योर वैष्णव दे हैव बाउंड कृष्ण टू द वुडन ग्राइंडिंग मोटर ऑफ देअर हार्ट कृष्ण से तोमार कृष्ण दीते पारो तुमार शकति आछे आमी तो कंगाल कृष्ण कृष्ण बोली दाई तब पाछे पाछे प्योर वैष्णवस दे परफॉर्म दामोदर लीला इन देयर हार्ट देयर हार्ट इज लाइक अ वुडन ग्राइंडिंग मोटर एंड दे हैव बाउंड दामोदर एंड कृष्ण कैंट लीव सो व्हेन दे सी अ सिंसियर साधक दे आर रेडी टू गिव दैट कृष्ण इन देयर हार्ट दिस इज व्हाट प्योर वैष्णवस डू नाउ इन द 7th एंड द 8th बिल्वमंगल ठाकुर इज पनिशिंग द थीफ बिकॉज़ एवरी थीफ नीड्स अ पनिशमेंट bigger the thievery bigger the robbery bigger the punishment so in 7 and 8 put together after in six verses glorifying the thief in the 7th and 8 the supreme court called as bilva mangal thakur is announcing life imprisonment life imprisonment let's see what what greatest punishment is given to this greatest thief by the greatest devotee shripad bilva mangal thakur let's do 7 and 8 together मनमानसे तामस राशि घोरे कारागृहे दुखमय निबद्ध लभ स्वहे चोर हरे चिराय स्वचौर्य दोषोचित दंड कारागृहे वस सदा हृदय मदीये मद्भक्तिपाशृढ़बंधन निश्चल सन् ताम कृष्ण हे प्रलय कोटि शतांतरे पी सर्वस्वचौर हृदया नहीं मोचयामी शिल बिल्व मंगल ठाकुर इज सेइंग इन वर्स सेवन एंड वर्स एट वेरी वंडरफुल पुट टुगेदर इट्स अ इट्स अ युग मक वेरी वंडरफुल थॉट He says, "My Lord, you are such a great thief, na? Swa chauriya dosh, uchitam eva dandam. I will give you danda, which is befitting your theft. Kab se ab chori kar rahe? From when have you been stealing? Time immemorial. If there is a thief who has stolen once, twice, thrice, the punishment can be accordingly. If somebody is a perpetual." Th- thief like this for time immemorial punishment also must be life imprisonment and how long does krishna live forever so life imprisonment for krishna means eternally imprisoned now if a thief is of this caliber stealing from everyone everything at all times without reason and getting joy by that by that and then training those also ट्रेनिंग द डिवोटीज ऑल्सो जिनकी चोरी हो चुकी अब वो जाते हैं हाउस टू हाउस टू स्टील टू स्टील दियर हार्ट एंड कलेक्ट नॉट जस्ट द पॉकेट बट द हार्ट ऑल्सो टू बिकम अ डिवोटी दिस थीफ इज सच अ ग्रेट थीफ थीफ ही क्रिएट्स थीव एंड देन दोज वर इज टारगेट दे गेट सो अट्रैक्टेड दे कम आउट ऑफ द हाउस रेडी टू गिव हिम 
सो बिल्व मंगल ठाकुर से ऐसा थी किसी ने देखा नहीं है सो द पनिशमेंट ऑल्सो हैज टू बी इंटेंस एंड द पनिशमेंट इज आई एम गोइंग टू थ्रो यू इन टू द डर्टीएस्ट जेल पॉसिबल एंड दिस जेल इज सो डर्टी एंड सो डार्क द डार्कनेस ऑफ अविद्या and the dirt of material desires are there in this jail and that jail is my heart bilva mangal thakur says my heart is that jail which is dirty because of material desires and dark because of avidya ignorance and o oh, greatest thief i am going to handcuff you with the news of bhakti bhakti pash rope of bhakti and throw you eternally into the jail of my heart that you can never leave so that's a very very harsh way of saying my lord i want you to live in my heart <laughs> this whole song is written vyajastuti vyajastuti means there is indirect glorification through criticism like for example if radharani says <clears throat> don't don't come close what does that mean <laughs> if krishna is standing outside the kunja radharani says don't don't come which means don't don't come which means definitely come <laughs> this is called indirect speech parokshavadam ati priyam when things are spoken indirectly krishna likes it a lot no? so radharani says o oh krishna na khalu gopika anandano bhavan You are definitely not the son of your shoda, Akhila Dehi na Mantar Atma Drik. You are the super soul in everybody's heart. So amazing glorification, right? Amazing. You are not the son of your shoda. You are the super soul in everyone's heart. Now is Radha Rani sitting on a Vyasa Sun giving a Bhagavatam class? This is the way by which she has protected the Shrimad Bhagavatam. That those who are new and they are trying to read the meaning that they will get. Oh, yes. Krishna is not the son of, just not just the son of Yashoda he is actually the super soul in the heart of everyone perfect next verse but there's a inner meaning prabhupada explains in the purport to one verse in shrimad bhagavatam that in this world generally we have seen that the daughters carry the characteristics of the father and the sons carry the characteristic of the mother now please don't map it with your own life but this <laughs> prabhupada said generally the sons carry the characteristic and the heart of the mother so radharani is saying oh krishna you are not the son of yashoda why because yashoda is very soft hearted and you cannot be the son of yashoda because you are very hard hearted one person cries anywhere mother yashoda will leave everything to go and here 60 billion gopis are crying on the banks of yamuna and singing gopi geet and you're still hiding you cannot be the son of yashoda because the son if he is carrying the heart of the mother the mother is gopi ka gopi who has a ka komal hriday swarupini very soft heart and you are carrying her heart i don't think so you are her son then krishna says then who am i akhila dehi naam antaratma drik you are the super soul in everyone's heart what does that mean oh again sarcasm the sarcasm is when we are drowning in the ocean or burning in fire super soul is watching but does he come out to help krishna you must be super soul because we are drowning in the water of our tears and burning in the fire of separation you are hiding and watching but you are not coming and helping you certainly must be the super soul <laughs> also super soul can see us but we cannot see super soul the so gopis are saying you are hiding and seeing us but we cannot see you both qualities and qualifications of super soul are fulfilled na khalu gopika nandano bhavan you cannot be the son of yashoda akhila dehi naam antar atmatrik you certainly must be super soul kyunki dono avgun hai aap mein both bad qualities are there in you so this is called vyajastuti jahan external stuti ho rahi hai par andar ninda ho raha hai या यहां पे क्या हो रहा है एक्सटर्नली निंदा हो रही है पर वह एक्चुअली स्तुति हो रही है बिल्व मंगल ठाकुर एक्सटर्नली सीम्स टू बी क्रिटिसाइजिंग दैट यू आर अ थीफ एंड आई विल इम्प्रेस इन यू बट इज एक्चुअली लूजिंग हिज हार्ट टू सच अ थीफ देर फॉर हिज पेन इज राइटिंग द चौराष्ट्र कम 
So what can we pray? Dear devotees, to conclude, I would like to say only one thing. Everyone ready? This is the last for the today. When Krishna appeared in the prison house of Vasudev Maharaj, what happened? Vasudev Maharaj was bound, completely bound. Kamsa had bound his arms, his feet and his neck also, Pashuvat, like an animal, so that he doesn't escape. But as soon as Krishna appeared and Vasudev Maharaj picked him, the first thing that happened was, what was the first thing that happened as soon as Vasudev Maharaj picked up Krishna? The iron shackles cracked, they broke. Our Acharyas explain, this is not astonishing at all. Because we like Vasudev are stuck in the prison of this world with the iron shackles of karma. And just by once lifting up Krishna's name in the basket of our tongue, the iron shackles of karma can be cut. What to speak of iron shackles in the prison house of Kamsa? It's not very astonishing. If somebody thinks, how is it possible he lifts Krishna and the iron shackles are cut, then think about it. How is it possible just by lifting Krishna in the form of his name once on the basket of the tongue, how can the iron shackles of karma be cut? If they can be cut, why not the iron shackles in Kamsa's jail? Next, what, what happened after that? Prison the prison doors opened. And our Acharyas explain. This is also not very astonishing. Because as soon as one starts chanting Krishna's name, the doors of Goloka Vrindavan are wide open. What to speak of the iron doors in the jail of Kamsa? Krishna is ready to open doors and wait with open arms for someone who holds on to his name. What to speak of the iron doors opening? I remember my Guru Maharaj once say, when he came to America for the first time, he came to the airport. And in the late 90s was the first time when... <clears throat> In the airport, he saw, as soon as you walk, the doors open. <laughs> he, he didn't know how to open it because that was the first time. So he, he didn't know what to do. Somebody said, Maharaji, dwar ke paas jaiye. Just go close to the door. And he said, dwar ke paas to jayenge, khulega kaise? I am ready to go close, but how will it open? How will it open? They said, no, there's a sensor. As soon as you get closer, it'll open. So my Guru Maharaj went close and it opened. And he said, ah. I remembered how Vasudev Maharaj carried Krishna and I was carrying Srimad Bhagavatam and the doors opened for me. <laughs> Next, what happened? The gods went to sleep. They have been waiting for this all their life. <laughs> they have been waiting for this. Very nice. Enthusiasm at 10 o'clock at night is certainly rare. <laughs> Very nice. So the third thing that happened was the gods of Kamsa went to sleep. And the Acharyas explained, this is also not very astonishing because when a devotee chants Krishna's names and the iron shackles of karma are cut and the doors of Vaikuntha are open, then the doorkeepers in the form of lust and anger and pride and envy are anyway sleeping. They are not active. So this is not very surprising. It is described... Very soon after, when Vasudev Maharaj stepped out, in the dark sky, the moon was shining bright. Ashtami Tithi. What does that mean? In the dark sky of Avidya, the moon of clear, undivided intelligence for a Vaishnava is shining bright. He knows the pathway to back home, back to Godhead. And as he's walking, what happens? Yamuna goes up and then comes down and splits. To show all of us that the ocean of suffering. Have you seen Venkateshwara? Huh, one hand is to the feet and the other is? One hand is like this and the other is like this. Correct? We all agree? One hand goes like this and the other is holding. What does this mean? It shows, oh dear devotees, Maam ekam sharanam braja. If you take shelter of my feet, the ocean of suffering will only be knee deep. The ocean of suffering which is ready to drown us, Venkateshwara is saying, if you take shelter of my lotus feet, it will be knee deep and you can walk across it. So next time when we see Venkateshwara, this is what he's teaching us. Mahatpadam punya yasho murare. 
By taking shelter of him, the ocean becomes knee deep. So Vasudev Maharaj carrying Krishna, he is seeing that the ocean of suffering is testing the sadhaka, the devotee. But it comes up to the knee and splits away. Which means if you carry Krishna, the ocean of suffering splits its way like Ramachandra. He builds the bridge and here Krishna, he splits the ocean. And then very soon, you will go to Gokul, like Vasudev Maharaj, to the house of Krishna where Yashoda and Nanda Maharaj are ready, waiting for you. So this appearance of Krishna in Mathura to Gokul, it represents the journey of the jiva from this world to that world. That is when Krishna appears in the jail. So by Krishna's appearance in the jail in the Bhagavatam, it links to the eighth verse of Chaurashtakam. Because there Krishna appeared in the jail, but very quickly he tried to leave the jail. But here Bilva Mangal Thakur says, My Lord, even after you left the jail, I will eternally imprison you in the jail of my heart. Vasudev Maharaj took you out of the jail, but Bilva Mangal Thakur says, I will imprison you back with the handcuffs of bhakti in the dark, dirty jail of my heart, life imprisonment, just you and me. But then Krishna said, If the jail is very dirty, it's completely dark, then I am also very dark, then you will not be able to see me. Because I'll camouflage myself. Bilva Mangal Thakur said, don't worry. As soon as you enter, the jail will no longer be dark. Which means, as soon as Krishna enters the heart, the heart will get lit up. And in that lit up prison of my heart, I will still see the dark complexion of your form. And in this way, you and I will always be together. Chauragra Ganya Purushashtakam ki? Srila Bilva Mangala Thakur ki? Srila Prabhupada ki? Hari Vilas Maharaj ki? Iskon Guru Brinda ki? Srila Guru Dev ki? Anantakoti Gaurabhakta Brinda ki? Jai Jai Sri Radhe Shah.